It's This Week in Warcraft, the Monday version. Hey, it's Alden. You can support the channel by liking this video, subscribing for more coverage, and catching me live on Twitch. The Radiant Echoes pre-patch event went through so many changes, I should just kind of start from the top and briefly explain how it works. At the top of the hour, every hour, the event will activate in one of three zones, in Searing Gorge, Dustwalla Marsh, or Dragonblight, and they'll rotate in that order. When the event activates, a number of objectives will spawn in the area, giving a kind of time rift feel to it if you've played through that during Season 2 of Dragonflight. It might be to kill a mini-boss or to complete objectives of any sort, and they're all completed as a group. As objectives are completed, a big bar at the top of the screen will deplete. When it's fully depleted, a big boss spawns. You fly over, you kill it, you get some rewards, and the bar fills up again for us to repeat the sequence until the next hour. It's very simple, it's lucrative, and of course, there's still a bit of strategy involved. Depending on how crowded the area is, completing objectives might be faster than defeating the little mini-bosses. If you're leveling characters off the event, you'll definitely get more experience doing objectives, as your main goal is to level up. Each zone has a daily quest attached to it, you'll see it right when you go in. It's shared across the account, so it's in your interest to complete these three dailies for big currency rewards. Your best bet is to be on for the first boss kill at the top of each hour when the most players are present. Between player motivations and incentives, participation drops sharply after that first kill unless you happen to be on a lucky shard. The strategy ends up being pretty similar to how the event was last week, only this time you can stay on a single character and get plenty of rewards or experience, and overall the event is still great for leveling with highly increased currency drops. If the cosmetics interest you, I advise completing your collections sooner than later just in case participation keeps steadily decreasing. While you're between rounds of Radiant Echoes, hey, how about some Time Walking Dungeons? It's a Legion this week. Complete five Time Walking Dungeons and a quest for some easy champion gear to help you level in just a few weeks. A Rothy Blizzard is the brawl, although it would have been great if Comp Stomp would come in for some last minute honor farms, hint hint. And the Darkmoon Fair is in town throughout this week in case you want to squeeze out a few more profession skill points or reputation milestones. The Trial of Style goes on for just a few more days. Remember, Transmog is free during the event, so maybe you want to decorate your warband, take some time out of your day to doll yourself up. As for the event itself, there aren't any new items introduced this time around, but now might be a good time to stock up on Trial of Style tokens, the currency. They're soul bound, and you can only hold on to a max of 200 per character. Now, if you got nothing better to do at the moment, stocking up now means when there are new items, you can buy them right away without having to wait for the next event with the crazy long wait between Trial of Style events. And over in Mythic Plus World, the affixes are fortified and storming with bursting for keys 10 and higher. So pour one out, so this will be the last storming and bursting we'll see for the foreseeable future. You know what, in fact, go ahead, let storming just hit you a bunch of times for old times sake, or run high keys, AoE everything down and then heal nothing, just feel alive moments before your grisly death. Three weeks from the posting of this video, The War Within officially launches worldwide for general audiences. There aren't a whole lot of things I'd suggest to be, you know, ahead of the game when it comes to leveling, and we're still not 100% sure how early access will work in The War Within, notably for professions. In developer statements, they did say profession cooldowns and specialization points would not be available during early access, but what does that mean exactly? Like, can we earn spec points but not be able to spend them? Uh, skinners will have an ability to help them retrieve better materials and that has a one hour cooldown so will that cooldown work so i'll be talking about gathering professions this week and i hope to answer most of your questions but if you have any of your own hey i'm all for hearing them so i can give you the best guide possible unless there's some cool quest content or animated shorts coming that might be it for this week folks stay tuned for more guides and other coverage please like the video subscribe and let's have bob close us out stay safe stay healthy and stay breezy hey, Join me, we're gonna do collecties. Cause tender is my breakfast, tender's what I breathe, tender is the loot I collect from the corpses, tender's running through my veins, tender's both my pleasure and pain. It's like coffee, tender's in my cup, suddenly it's not cause I bought things. Check me on my badass broomstick mount, got my tender then your mama can count them.